<laughs> All right. So today on Smooth with Rufus, we got a very special guest today. It's Jeremy Frisch. And uh, uh, my tag team partner, Corey's not here today. I got him out on a, on a special assignment. And I have as my co-host, the mayor, Connor Ryan, who everybody probably knows. Right. We all do. So, so, uh, Everyone in the room, at least. and, and I, I, I just found out that, that, uh, Jeremy coached Connor sort of when Connor was in college and Connor's old. So that must've been a real long time ago. Yeah. So, uh, so let's start off, Jeremy, start off and tell us a little bit about what you do or where, you know, where you're at and what you do and things. And we'll, we'll get her going cranking from there. Okay. Yeah. So, um, so my, uh, I, I guess the, uh, I, I'm, a. I I guess I could be a strength conditioning coach, youth athletic development coach. I'm a dad. Uh, I own my own facility. Um, you know, it's kind of mom and pop operation sort of sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't work and we're on the verge of closing sometimes. And sometimes we're really doing great. So, you know, that goes and, uh, I got four kids who are all, uh, you know, my, ex my big experiment to see if this long-term athletic development thing works. Um, so, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're a big part of what I do down at, uh, you know, obviously I'm their dad, but also down at my facility, they're a big part of, um, you know, what yeah. I do down there. I mean, they, they, they take part in the training. They help me coach. They, uh, you know, they, they kind of, they, it's amazing what uh, kids pick up when they uh, grow up around it, you know? So, sure. So yeah, so I'm out here in Clinton, Massachusetts. Um, you know, pretty close to my man Connor over here, who's uh, you know we've known each other for a long time, and I did get to coach him a little bit way back when his in his college days and my early my early coaching days. So the John uh, and Philly Sports Club in Auburn. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I had the opportunity to um, this guy basically he he opened this massive you know indoor facility, uh, it's like a hundred yard indoor field. And uh, he was just trying to fill it with people. So he just, the more people that came through the door, he put them on the field and he said, Hey, uh, go out there and coach. So that's kind of what I did. Yeah. So, um, you know, like that's I said awesome. before, those are my, those are my favorite, those are my favorite uh, experiences because it really makes you kind of figure things out as a coach. <laughs> that's awesome. So, so are, are you, are you in the basement of an old school? I'm in the basement of my elementary school. Yep. So I'm in the, <laughs> I'm in the cafeteria of my. Yeah, that's right. It's cafeteria. That's right. Yep. That's yep. Awesome. So yeah. So um, the guy that you know, one of the, uh, the our former superintendent. Um, I've known him since I was a kid. He grew up in my neighborhood, and so uh, you know, they had this space open, and he knew what I did, and he thought it would be a great opportunity for me to, you know, it would be it would be great to have that type of facility inside the building because it's so close to all the schools and and things like that. So we, uh, we could probably uh, afford to have more space. But, um, you know, it is what it is. We, we kind of get it done, um, you know, on a daily basis with the, with the space we have. It's so awesome. It's, I've been there. It's pretty interesting. You know, if you a long-term athletic development in the facility, you know, in the mornings, we have adults coming through the door to do, you know, general fitness and just trying to stay strong and, and resilient as they get older. And then um, kind of as the afternoon comes in, we have college kids coming, coming through the door and then, uh, you know, high school kids. And then it's like down the middle school athletic development. And then eventually we have a, what a program we call speed demons, which is kind of like elementary physical education class. So you kind of see the different ages and the different types of training that, uh, you know, are involved with each age every day, you know, Monday through Friday in that place. So it's, uh, it's pretty interesting. And it's, I'll tell you what, it's a lot of fun. So I know several years ago when, when uh, Con Connor, I think he's still cooking his dinner. Um, when Connor was, was at IFAST, he said, you got to meet this guy, Jeremy Frisch. And I said, Oh, okay. You know, that's fine. No, I'd, I'd love to. He started telling me what you do, you know, and stuff. And so I'm just curious, how, how did you come along this path of long-term athletic development? I mean, was was well, there? Did you always know it, or always have a concept of it, or did you just kind of think it up, or start reading something about it? You know how? how yeah, you, I, you know what? So, so I I started off as a young as a young coach, working with a lot of youth athletes. But at mm -hmm. the time, being young and kind of kind of thought I knew everything, 
I, uh, you know, I told everyone I was going to be a strength and conditioning coach, a, a Division One strength and conditioning coach, or in, I'm going to be in the NFL strength and conditioning coach. So that was my that was my plan because I read Super Training, and I read all those Russian texts, and I knew everything about everything when it came to training. And so I was gonna, I was gonna do that. Uh, I was gonna that was gonna be my future. And then I realized quickly when I finally did become a college strength and conditioning coach that a lot of athletes were walking through the door with a lot of limitations. Mm -hmm. And I realized that those limitations are not going to be taken care of in a four year, uh, you know, the four years that you're going to be working with those athletes at the college realm. And, you know, the more I dug into it, the more I realized that those limitations that they were carrying probably could be taken care of or probably need to be taken care of long before. And so as I worked my way back, you know, you know, high school and, and middle school and elementary school, I realized, you know, for me, I think my future is was going to be trying to build a foundation for athletes to be able to, you know, to whether they want to become great athletes or they do become great athletes or just kind of want to be active adults. I think I think my uh, where I started to lean towards was was that type of uh, training environment. And so the more I studied, the more I dug in and funny at the same time, I started having kids, you know, so then. I started getting into sort of like the infant development and, and toddler development and young childhood development. And I, it all kind of came together at the same time. So I realized the only way I was going to be able to do that stuff is to have my own facility. And so I quit being a college strength and conditioning coach and opened up my own facility and sort of been doing it ever since. And, and as, as the years went by, I sort of, you know, I started with working with primarily college and high school kids, but then it became middle school and then it worked its way down all the way to, I think the youngest kids we have coming through the door now are kindergarten. <laughs> Funny how that so, happens. Isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So, and, and, and like I said, my kids sort of played a huge role in that too, because they have friends and meet their parents yeah. and then they, their kids come down. And, and uh, so, so now we have it come kind of through, through all throughout the ages. And I, and I, and I think one of my biggest things in the last few years is like trying to, either write about or talk to people about or you know try to help other coaches realize the difference between what to do with each age group you know what right. i mean i think there's a tendency to to treat little kids like small adults and so um i've been a big big supporter and kind of trying to trying to help people understand the difference the different age groups and what needs to be done during those time periods um that's kind of what i really love to talk about you know these days jeremy jeremy jokes about you know some days things are some months or weeks things are good or bad. He's so curious that he would just get kids in there just because he he saw something that he might be able to help them with, and he he forget to charge them. He doesn't even care. He's just like I, I'm curious. I just want to see this. What can we do with this kid? I'm kind of joking. Like he just wants. He's so curious, and he. I remember I remember his his two little kids at the time. He only had two, running around, and they just he didn't tell them what to do. They just he's just like. There's, there's implements all over and it's, it's a fun place to be. Sure. So sure. it's amazing. I was, we were just talking about my oldest, who's, he's a, he's a big kid. He's really, he's a really, he just happens to be naturally kind of a big guy and uh, he's 14 now, but when he was really young, like one of the things that we always did was like hang on rings and climb ropes. Like he loved to like hang ropes and climb on rings. And you, and, and then like, as he got a little older, he got a little heavier, like just, you know, he wasn't like obese, but he was a little pudgy and a little stocky. And like, he still continued to try to do those things, but it was still, it was hard for him. But it's yeah. amazing now, like, like I noticed the other day, I'm like, dude, you still have like a vice grip. You got like a vice grip. Cause like, oh, I, and I swear it's from when he was a kid, he strengthened his grip and it sort of like, now he's like, he's 14. He hit puberty. He's like getting big and muscular and he likes lifting. And I'm like, you know, you, your grip, you, you developed that when you were a kid, you know, it's hard to explain. He was like, ah, but you, you don't care what I'm saying. But, but for yeah. me, when I look at it over the long term, I'm like, holy shit, like you, that helped you when you were young to do that so early in your life. Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's, you know, you know, all, all that kind of, all that kind of stuff. What, um, um, I, I know you're an avid reader and I see some of the stuff you put up. What was kind of the first thing you read, um, in, in your, you know, in your, in your progression to, uh, uh, go to this long-term development model. You know what, uh, Vern Gambetta posted a book years ago. I used to follow, I mean, I still follow Vern a lot, but, 
you know, he was one of those guys that I kind of latched on to early on because of just, he always talked about athletic development. And so one of the books that he, uh, that he had um, put in one of his books was um, it was called uh, physical, physical education, building the foundation uh, by Carl Gabbard. And uh, that was one of the first books that like, I, I'm really the, one of the first PE books that I really jumped into, jumped into in depth. And, uh, you know, it's still one of my favorite texts. And, you know, what's a riot is that I found the author, Carl, Carl Gabbard. He's on Twitter. Oh, really? And I basically like found him and told him. And like, then he went back and watched all my videos. And he's like, he was like blown away at like all the stuff that I basically use from his book that it, he's actually seeing like in person. He's probably, he wrote, he wrote that, he wrote that book 30 years ago. You know what I mean? And now he's like a professor where he's into research. He probably doesn't see that stuff ever. And I'm like, here, these are the videos like that. Here's some videos that you inspired. And he was like (laughs) totally blown, totally blown away to see it. So that was, was yeah, that was an awesome thing. So that was one of the books I really loved. And um, another good PE book is called Children Moving. Yeah, Children Moving uh, by Graham, I think. I don't know the the guy's first name, which is a great book. There's a... A lot of great content in there, but another guy who, um, who, who's really great, who I, I read and listen to anytime he's on a podcast is a guy named uh, Kelvin Giles. Who's, I don't know if he's from England or Australia. He's like, goes back and forth between both, but you know, he was a big, big proponent of, you know, just getting kids back into physical education and what's happened with physical education and, and what are the things you can do for athletic development and the different types of, um, you know, activities for them to do throughout the years, you know, as they get, um, you know, kind of, kind of a real solid, his own solid um, long-term athletic development model. So that's another guy I really, I really enjoy listening to and have a lot of, uh, a lot of resources from, he's got two books, one book's called um, uh, uh, Introduction to Athletic Development. And the other one is like uh, development of movement skills, I believe. So he got two different books that are like, you know, right up my alley. And then recently, my favorite book is a book from the group in, um, I think they're in uh, Holland. Um, it's called the Athletic Skills Model. Which yeah, is a, I got, yeah, got a, I got, yeah, I got yeah. That's books. a real, that's a really good book. That book's basically like everything I've been saying, everything that I would would want to say, but I don't know how because I'm not smart yeah. enough. They yeah. basically put it in a, they put it in a book and said it for me. So that, that was a really good, good thing. And the way they set it up and just kind of like the, their whole basic, you know, first it's basic movement skills and then you move on to kind of, you know, the more important stuff later on. It's, it's really cool how, how they uh, set that, that book up. So, yeah, that's my, those are my faves. Yeah. I think um, I've got Gabbard's book and I've got the one from Holland. I can't remember the guy's name and I got him off, off of Facebook following you. (laughs) <laughs> the, well, that's great good enough for him i'm getting them you know so i love it yeah <laughs> i wouldn't it's got great. it but uh um it, it, it it's funny because being involved in weightlifting like i was um uh the the eastern europeans talk about this all the time you know and, it, and it's um uh that's kind of where i first learned about it was from sure. the eastern europeans and and uh you know talking to some of those guys and stuff and it and, and it makes a whole lot of sense, especially when you have, you know, a limited population like that. And, yeah. Uh, I, you know, if you, if you see some of those uh, YouTube clips of like the Polish weightlifting yeah. team yeah. in the sixties, yeah. they're, they're like uh, pseudo gymnasts. You know what I mean? Oh, like, yeah. you know, guys are doing amazing feats of, of uh, acrobatics, acro- acrobatics and gymnastics. You know what I mean? And that's yeah. just warming up. They're just warming up for training. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's really, it's really amazing. So, so yeah, I love that so, stuff. So the littlest guy in that video is a guy named Zygmunt Smallhurts, who was the national coach for USA Weightlifting for a few years. Ah, uh, gotcha. And I got and I got a chance to meet him. He was he was originally a gymnast that they converted from gymnastics to uh, weightlifting. It when, makes sense, right? Yeah, yeah. And, totally uh, makes sense. He was a world record holder, and I think he won the gold medal. I think in 1972. I think. And uh, he hadn't changed much. And today, the guy's, guy's God, he's got to be 80. And he's still climbing mountains. Unbelievable. <laughs> you know, he loves go camping every weekend. And, and 
and uh, you know, go climb mountains. He, when he was out in Colorado, he'd go out to Pikes Peak all the time and walk around on it and all the other That's stuff. Great. And, and uh, um, now there's there, there there's a there's a lot to it. Um, so tell me, kind of how how you arrange your um, uh, your your setup. I mean, by age groups or or you know by by a maturity level or how however you do it. Yep. So. The, um, the youngest group starts at uh, kindergarten. Basically, I just went with like kind of, you know, if they can sit and if they can go to school, my, you know, and, and be in class all day, they definitely can come into my facility and be able to listen sure. to a couple, couple commands and tell them what to do and, <laughs> sure. and go. So, so we start and we go, that group's uh, K to two. Uh-huh. And so, um, and, and that class is just minimal talking just a look just setting it up that's where you're going to see me doing obstacle courses and just simple right. games the kids can understand and uh but that group you know that that group is it requires its own set of expertise as far as like being ready and prepared um because like you know when you tell a group of 14 year olds to go get a water break it may take three to four or five minutes when you take tell some kinder first graders to go get a water break, they run to their water, take a sip, and run back to you, <laughs> and are expecting and are expecting their next activity to be ready to go. So you know the biggest issue with that group is just being ready for your next your next activity because if you're not ready, they're going to just start going to find something, right? They're going to find something to do. You know what I mean? And there's a lot of stuff in my gym that they could go find, go do that I you know maybe don't want them to go do. You know what I mean? So. Sure. The biggest issue with the biggest issue with that is, is just making sure we get the next activity is ready to go. So, um, but again, it's real simple rules and real simple ideas and activities. Like I said, when I set up a big obstacle course, you know, it's not anything I ever say, Hey, this is how you go over this thing. And this is how you go under this. I literally say, go. And they, yeah, figure I love it out. That. yeah, yeah. I love that. you know what I mean? It's that age and that type of environment. That's all you really need. And the best thing about that for me is like, as Connor said, like, I love to watch and see two different things. You, the different ability levels, you, you, the kids have different techniques to, to get over and under and around the different obstacles. You know what I mean? So, and over time they figure out how to they get better at that stuff too, you know? So, so that age is really fun. And um, I'm really busy with that age group. I got uh, two groups right now and they're totally full. So I usually only accept 10 kids per group because I don't want it too crazy um and that's like totally packed right now through the winter time and then um the next step up would be kind of what i call the youth athletic development group and that's basically grades three through five and uh you know those type of train that group we get a little bit more organized you know we will do some exercises maybe in the beginning like warming up we'll work on balance we'll get on the ground do some crawling you know, we'll do some crab type stuff. You know, we'll start to practice gymnastic moves. Um, you know, we'll start to start to put those things into place where I'm actually sort of teaching them a little bit. But we'll also keep, you know, we'll also keep the games with the races, the relay races. Yeah. Sometimes we put in obstacle courses, you know, but we just add a little bit more. It's just getting a little bit more complex and we're just asking them to listen a little bit more. Um, that age group's a little funny because, you know, you got a third grader. So this, you know, a third grader in that group might be super immature and he might almost be still be able to have to be with a lower group. You might have a fifth grader who's becoming a really good athlete who could probably go lift with the seventh and eighth graders. You know what I mean? So that, that group, you know, it's just, it gets a little tricky at that point. And then I just take it by a athlete by athlete basis. You know, um, if a kid seems like he's really mature and he doesn't, he's kind of getting sort of, phasing out of some of the game type stuff and wants to get a little bit more serious then I got no problem bumping them up with the next crew. Um, you know, which is sort of like, a the next age group is sort of like a, um, junior high group. It's grade six through eight, you know? So this group, these kids are mostly playing, you know, they're into sports. Um, you know, they play football, basketball, baseball, all those soccer field hockey, all those things. The ones that come to me, since I'm a private facility, they're fairly, interested in being there for the most part sure. you know what i mean yeah so yeah. we start we start teaching you know we'll start to start teaching like that's my group where we're, we've been teaching 
Like for the last month, we've been working on a hang clean and a front squat and learning how to snatch and deadlift and those type of things. Uh, but we might be, we, we, the first maybe 15, 20 minutes of the group though, we're doing, you know, dive rolls and hanging from the bar and climbing and, and, you know, crawling on the ground and, and, um, you know, still doing some of those, the, you know, getting that variety of movement in along okay. with starting to teach them how to, you know, do strength training and, and speed training and stuff. And then, and then from there, it's kind of high school age and that's what I call strength and strength and conditioning. And so it's right. your typical, whatever, whatever you can, whatever you think strength conditioning is at the high school level where it's similar, although I have, you know, I have my, my own ways of doing things, I guess. Um, I think my, one of my biggest things is as the kids get older and they start to learn um, the exercises and what they do, I mm -hmm. oftentimes let the, I'll sit down with the kids and we like program together. Mm -hmm. It'd be like, I'm like, you know, kid will be like, ah, I, I friggin' hate trap bar deadlifts. I'm like, all right, well, we don't, we don't have to do them. You don't want to do it. Fine. Well, let's find an alternative. You know what I mean? So we, we, we try to find exercises they, they enjoy things they want to, things they want to do. And at the same time, what are your goals? What are the things you want to do? And then I want them to be like, my ultimate goal is, and I got this from, from one of the, one of the, one of the, my athletes at Holy Cross, he had moved to England and he had, he had sent me an email and he, he said, you know, I walked into this gym in England. I just moved there and I didn't know what I was doing. You know, I didn't know where I was, you know, it's the first time he'd ever been away from like really been away from home. He's at a, you know, he's at, sure. he's in another country. And I, yeah. and he's like, I walked in the gym and I, and I knew what to do because like, I just remembered what the stuff that we used to do together. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And it was just a great, it was great for him because it just made him feel good to be able to, to, to kind of, cause he was sat a, sort of out of sorts where he was. Um, sure. So when a kid That's goes away to college, yeah. You know what I mean? When a That's kid goes away to college, I hope he walks in his college gym and walks right over to whatever, whatever it is that he wants to do because he knows how to do it. He has no, he has no, uh, you know, Oh, what the hell do I do today? Oh, I'm going to go sit on his bike and, you know, ride on a bike yeah. for 20 minutes. Like, like, I know what to do because I've done this stuff for years. That's cool so. that you go with what they're motivated with, right? That that builds some confidence at, at the, those intermediate ages. And then kind of as they get in, and if they're going to go to college athletics, you kind of have to step up and do things you're uncoupled with. But when they're developing, yep. that's cool to go with that. Yeah. And it, and it, and it, you know, and then I, I do sit down and say, listen, there's, there's some things we, there's some things we have to do, you know, and there's some things that, um, you may not want to do all the time, but you should put them in. And so I, I, we got two different types of athletes at our gym. You know, it, it's funny. Uh, the kids either love the warm up or hate the warm up <laughs> because it's, you know, it's, it's not, it's, we, the, a lot of the warm ups for the high school kids is we take pieces of stuff we did as kids because I don't want them to forget those things. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. you might be a 17 year old kid and you're still, on the mat doing forward rolls and yep. back shoulder rolls and you might be trying to work on handstands but you just grew like 12 inches in the last two years and it's a little it feels weird and you know what i mean so you might still be working on standing on a box balancing on one foot lifting a medicine ball in different directions even though you did that when you were 12 well, now you're even bigger and your your center of gravity is you know, a little bit different than it used to be. So we're going to make sure that you still have that balance. You know what I mean? And right. so uh, the, some of the kids that don't like to do it, but I, you know, the kids that really want to get better and, and want to kind of, you know, put the extra effort in, they'll, they'll, they'll come in. Then there's the other group of kids that walk in and they sort of like see me and go another way and try to make believe like they stretched and did all the things they should have done. And they just want to go right into their lift. So, yeah. and I usually go track them down and say, Hey, get over here, go do this, you know? So, I, yeah. It's I, had a, I had a group of kids one time and they, we were in a old elementary school gym, you know, we had like 20 platforms in place. And, and, uh, and so they, um, you know, they, they would come in and shoot baskets. Right. So they'd come straight from school to the training hall, right. And have walk, walk across the street and come to the training hall. And, uh, um, and they'd come in, they'd play basketball, you know, or soccer or handball or something. And I'd just use that for the warm up. And eventually they got to the point where, you know, they knew, they knew how long the workout was going to take. They knew when they had to leave. So they would play for however long they wanted to play. Right. 
and or however long you know it took them they get a nice sweat up and, okay now we start start our workout ready to go yeah I love it so so you know as um with with a less experienced group i like i like for them to because they can't a lot of them you know just come straight from school you know just let them go and play games i don't care what you're playing play games yep. you know we'll, we'll we'll play tag or you know they'll, they'll get a tag game or a soccer game or soccer tennis or or you know any anything that's available pretty much and and i kind of use that as as the warm up athletic development type thing because I deal with mostly middle school kids now. And, sure, uh, you know what? It's great. And I talk about engaging a bunch of kids, you know, in the beginning yeah. of in the in the beginning of a training session. You know what I mean? Yeah. Instead of like uh, laying on the floor and activating something, um, you know, they don't. Yeah. They wouldn't. They wouldn't really enjoy that stuff. We do the same thing. You know, they uh, yeah. kids come in and play pickle all the time. They put the mats down and start chucking the ball back and forth and running. Right. Yeah, and it's great. It's, it's so funny. Runners like, and gunners. We out, runners and gunners, we call it. And, uh, you know, one day, uh, my son, we, we, we sat back and calculated how many how many yards he ran in a game of pickle. <laughs> and it was like it was like 650 yards he had run. <laughs> you and, need to get one of those GPS things for this right? game. Right? <laughs> and, he's, and he's eight. He's eight. He was eight <laughs> years old. And he had run – because it's 25 yards, right? And it's like we just set, we just kept counting, like how many times you went up and back, and he kept they kept missing, and no one was hitting them. And it was like 650 total yards he had run in that wow. one session. It was like you know, and he had no idea, and like it was so fun. It, it wasn't hard, or it wasn't wasn't difficult for yeah. him, and he didn't complain. You know what I mean? It was amazing. So I always you know, keep you, that stuff in mind when you, it comes you, to conditioning. You don't, you don't tell him to run. Right, and, and they get and they get more out of it than if you told them, okay, we're going to do 10, 25 yard sprints, right? Yeah, exactly. Um, in in the summertime, we I take them out. We do less weightlifting. We do more stuff outside, you know. And, and uh, I remember I had um, a group of wrestlers, young wrestlers, you know, middle school kids, and I take them outside while I'm get some sprinting in. So I would throw a frisbee. You know, we throw it 20, 30 yards. You know, it's pretty much you know just acceleration stuff. And just kind of get them to track where the first wheel is going. It's great. And I had these two, I don't want to say fat kids, but big kids, right? And uh, and uh, they uh, they both came came to me at one point and said, can can we move the distance out farther? Yeah, how far you want to how far you want to go? And fifty, okay. So I had another kid who could throw the frisbee that far, and I, he'd throw it that far. You know, and I hear those fat kids go running after that thing <laughs> for all they're worth, man. I mean, they are motoring. And, <laughs> and I'm thinking, I'm thinking, oh, my gosh. And then when it changes direction, they got to stop and plant, you know, come back and try to right. chase it, catch it and stuff. But you're right. They just kind of get lost in it. And, you know, I just let them do it till you know, I kind of read, you know, the mood. And we got a whole lot more sprinting in than we would have gotten. Oh. So, if, you know, let's. You know, I want to do, you know, 10 fifties or something. You know, we, we must, yep. I, I think I counted 20 or 30 sprints each one I'm did just yeah, chasing, it, just it, chasing it, the fruit. So, hey, have so it. the first, so when I was at Holy Cross, Connor, if I mess the story up, just jump in. But Connor had come, he was going to intern and kind of help out with us during the summer program. And I hadn't seen him in a long, long time. And I believe. He had just come from like Mike. Uh, you might have been working at Boyle, like helping out with yep. Mike Boyle's place or whatever. And so Connor shows up the first day, and and uh, we're about to start the session. And Speedball. he's and I'm like, yeah, I'm like, dude, you want to go? Like we hadn't even started yet, no training, nothing. And I'm like, you want to go out and play some speedball, or I think it was pickle or one of the two. Speedball. And he's like, he's like right now, and I'm like, yeah, like right now, we're going to play speedball right now. <laughs> he's like, yeah, let's go. <laughs> and like you know, we went outside and just—it was not like your, I guess, your typical you know, strength conditioning type warm up. You know what I mean? It's uh, yeah, no, we, ours, just, our, we we uh, dove right in. Our, ours isn't so, either. You know, I may structure some things, but there's other things. You know, I just add let them, let them go play. They, they yeah, need that. That's what I love they need, about. Go ahead. Oh, I'm just gonna say that I think they need that break from school. Hundred percent. You know to transition to, to go to the training hall and they're tired from school let them go get some energy back you know go play yeah you know, for sure 
you know, and, you know, we'll include, you know, some four rolls or some tumbling or something like that. But, you know, if we got mats, but Hey, you know, just to me, Great. just let them go play. And I get, I get better concentration out of them. I think when, when we Great. do stuff, go ahead, Connor, I'm sorry. No, 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 I was interrupting. I was just saying that, you know, that I came from, you know, Cressy's and Boyles originally before I went to uh, Holy Cross. It's very structured, a lot of, you know, a lot of good structure there. And Jeremy has that, uh, but it was, it was definitely refreshing to go to that because it, it made your imagination as a, even as a coach kind of explode. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the same thing with you, Rufus, you know, I'm, I'm out at IFAS doing a very structured thing with Bill. It's fantastic. You know, you're on the hour and you go over and watch Rufus and you're like, man, that guy's pretty awesome technical with the lifts. And then you see him later, like, you know, we're going to blindfold you and, you know, you know play tag. And, and just, I'm like, <laughs> amazing. He, and at first you're like, is Rufus like the smartest guy you ever met? Or he pretends not to be. And Jeremy's kind of the same way. Jeremy's this like amazing athlete. He'll, he'll never say it, but he's super humble, even more humble as a coach. And you're like, is this guy the smartest dude you, that's ever out there? And it's, uh, it was, it was refreshing. And, I think that, again, the curiosity of Jeremy watching, you know, we got into, he got me into brain highways, Casey Wheel, and uh, I was in the dynamic neuromuscle stabilization at the time, you know, looking after Charlie. And uh, it was just something so fascinating. I, would, I couldn't help but want to go talk to Jeremy. So we'd have our little talks. But Jeremy, what, what, would, uh, what would you say looking back now that, you know, we've, been away for a while what, what's different now what have you learned to say I thought this or I thought this really formally in terms of what you were learning and now it just didn't pan out that way or or just something you learned since then that's changed well you know what I think I think that um some of the stuff I did early on even though I probably still do it now I sort of tried to coach it a lot I try to like try to sit down and actually teach it. Whereas like now I'm so much more laid back and I realize like, okay, it's going to happen. It just, it's going to happen in its own time. You know what I mean? So I just, I'm, I'm way more patient when it comes to what I'm doing with the kids. And cause I know that um, I don't freak out if something doesn't work out, doesn't pan out whatever it is. Like, uh, like for example, years ago, like if I, if I taught a kid how to Olympic lift, and like, he didn't get really good at it in the first few days. Like I was, he wasn't getting it. I'd just scrap it and move on to something else. I'd be like, oh, he's one of those kids that can't do Olympic lifts. You know what I mean? When realizing like, you know, if you just stick with it, you know, he'll, they'll eventually get it and, and they might not be the best at it, but it's, it's, it's worth, it's worth them pursuing and worth them doing those things. So I'm, I'm a lot more patient now. Um, I yeah. think that if someone walked into my my facility and saw some of those kids doing those things, they would probably be like, this place sucks. This guy's this guy doesn't know how to coach technique, blah, blah, blah. But really it's like, I'm just letting it happen. It's not like we're loading, loading tons of weight on the bar, but we're just letting the kids sort of figure it out as they go. You know what I mean? So I would say I, I'm probably way more hands-off than I used to be as far as teaching yeah. is. Um, yeah. The maturity comes with patience. Yeah. Patience. And just knowing that, like seeing, seeing that having, having worked with a bunch of athletes, um, realizing that, um, you know, it'll, it'll, it'll start to work out later on. So especially like, I'll tell you, I got a, some kids that um, when they were probably in middle school, they were average or below average in terms of like their athleticism. You know what I mean? Like they could move, but not super fast, but they could like kind of do the things I wanted them to do, but they just weren't awesome at it. And the, and the, and the same thing, like I would go see those kids play those sports their sports that they played and they were like average, like they, but they got exposed to it. Right. They got exposed and they got better. And then what you saw was that their skills started to improve, but physically they just weren't there yet because, you know, they just, whether it was, they hadn't hit a growth spurt or, you know, it just it hasn't come, come together. And then all of a sudden, like, boom, they hit puberty. And like, you see these kids that those skills that they learned way back start to really to show themselves because now the physicality is, is there. Right. They grew four or five inches. They got bigger. They got stronger. They got faster. And all those skills that they had are now starting to show themselves. And I've yeah. seen it happen now multiple times. But when I was a younger coach, I didn't have to experience that experience yet. Um, so now I know. Like now I know when I have like a sixth grader and he's sort of maybe a little awkward, and but he's doing the stuff I want him to do, that that exposure is really good. 
and that that stuff's going to rear its head later on. It's not going to happen that year or that, or maybe not even the next year. It's going to be two, three, four years down the line that you're going to start to see the benefits of what you're doing now. You know what I mean? It's yep. the same thing. I've, I've had kids who's, who came to me because they were overweight and we had a real hard time with them losing weight. But they just, because at that age, they just, it's really hard for them. They're not going to get super strong. They're not going to put a ton of weight on the bar because they haven't hit puberty yet. They don't have the hormones to do that stuff yet. But you know, I know what? Those kids that stuck with it and continue to do it are now like, I have like four or five kids in my gym that are former fat kids who are now just tall and lean and long because they worked their butts off when they were young and learned all the things they needed to do. And it all paid off later on. You know what I mean? And it was, yeah. and you see it, like you, you see some of those kids like the, they go through like, um, I, I swear it's just, it's something happens to girls, but mostly boys, they get, they go out before they go up. You start to see kids put on weight going out and they get a little pudgy and a little slow. And all of a sudden, a couple of years later, boom, they go up and they're just like, they turn into athletes and it's amazing to see. And I think if you just, during that time period, if the, the kids do the stuff they like to do, they don't, they get exposed to the right type of movements and they continue to do it through those, those kind of funny years, those tween years, that's where you, down the road, when they're 13, 14, 15, 16, you start to see the, the results pay off. So that's been for me so great. So such a awesome thing to witness and be part of. That's a, really, that's a really good message for, you know, I think skill coaches, but also strength coaches and PTs, whoever in our field to hear, because you, you think I've seen it a lot, like this kid, they might give up on someone early, but really the, the preparation and all the confidence that you can build in those moments moving forward is important. Obviously you got to believe in the Huge. kids for the, to help. And I'll, I'll tell you what, too, also like uh, up here and like at emotionally and like attitude wise, like exactly. I've had kids who were sixth graders who were the biggest pain in the asses and a couple of years <laughs> of maturity. And I love them. You know what I mean? Like, oh, they used to drive me up a wall and then like just a little bit of growing up and they just turn into like such great people because you don't want to know what they were a pain in the ass, but they didn't know it. They're they're that's what being a kid's all about, but they're around the right people and they're learning those lessons slowly. And as they get older, they start to figure it out. Right. And so that's why I always say environment's like the biggest thing for, for kids, you know, put them in the right environment and you get, you get some good results. And, and that's growth. like that. Yeah. And so I, that's another thing, but a huge, huge thing too, is kids who are just, man, I just wanted to kill them. And then, you know, <laughs> they get into high school and they're like, they're the best. They're just, they're just great. You know? That's, Mark, that's another they're thing. Just like you, Jeremy. Yeah, just an awesome thing to witness. You know, it's just an awesome no, thing to witness. That, that's church right there. That's that's good, and that's that's really good stuff. And also with with early specialization and all these kids, you know, parents, you know, trying to keep up with the Joneses and competing with people around them. I think it's still an important message for them to hear, in terms of the, you know, people start to press. Oh, my kid's not good enough. Get him in more structure. Give him more, you know. Uh, skill specific stuff when it's really it's probably the opposite yeah 100 percent. yeah and get them in more more variety and and more uh you know diversity and, and have them be exposed to as much as possible especially during those early years that like that six age six to 12 man there's so much stuff good stuff that goes on at that time period you know what i mean they're they just and just think about it too, like the difference between a six-year-old and a 12-year-old, like how much changes in that time. And then so much changes and, and how much of a time you gets this huge time period to, to implement so many things. And if you do it right, like what the results can be down the road, it's, it's amazing. Rufus, so, Rufus or Jeremy jump in here, but well, how important is it to like actually throw a ball as hard as you can, to kick a ball as hard as you can, to jump as high as you can? How important is that? It's everything. I think it's, a, I think, I think you won't intent, get it. Otherwise. You, you won't get it. It's that's the time to do it is when you're, when you're a kid, do everything. And most kids do anyways, but it's important to reiterate to coaches that they need to be doing that stuff too. You know what I mean? Uh, one of the biggest, one of the biggest light bulb moment for me. And I, I don't know why I never put the two and two together because we do so many sprints and jumps and, and things like that. But like a baseball coach told me like, yeah, have your kids swing as hard as you can, like every time. And I'm like, huh? And, and it, it's amazing how, when they don't think about all the things that 
like the technique and they just do it, how it's they self-correct and how good they get at it. You know what I mean? Same with sprinting. It's, it's same with sprinting. Like, dude, there's so many, like all these drills and uh, like, like kids don't want to do sprint drills. Just get them sprinting. Yeah. They're going to look funny ball. sometimes, you know, go get that ball. Let's chase each other. Like, Tag. Kids are gonna kids are gonna look really good at like four, five, and six, and then they're gonna go to school and start sitting all day, and they're gonna look really shitty from like six, seven, eight, and nine. But then they're gonna kind of get stronger and more athletic as they start to hit the growth spurt. And so you're gonna see them go from like being good runners to crappy runners to good runners again. Like things change, and like there's no drill that's gonna fix those things. You just let it happen. Like you just continue you continue to expose them to those things over the years while their body's changing, right? So that's like a big thing with the, we get all the kids doing gymnastic stuff, like rolling and, and learning to fall. It's great when they're little because they're, they're tiny. They're really close to the ground. They can do it. But it's also important to continue to do that stuff when they get older because now they're involved in more contact sports, right? Now the, hit, the hits get harder. You know, the game gets more violent. The physicality of the game increases. And now you're not doing stuff that's helping, like ha having them or teaching them to be able to hand themselves, handle themselves when they hit the ground. Like that's when they should be doing all that stuff, maybe even more. So like when they start to hit that growth spurt and grow and get a little bit awkward, that's when I want them doing all those coordination things. I want them to continue to do those, those things throughout, throughout their, uh, their early teen years as well. So yeah, you guys got me going now. That's great. Just go. <laughs> Right. <laughs> just go. I'm just sitting here. I'm, I'm just sitting here, sitting under your learning tree and learning. You know. You know yeah. Uh, so it's 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 awesome. It's I I love. I just I I. Someone said to me the other day, like you're always got a book, like reading something, and I'm like, I, that's not work to me. That's like, you know what I mean? I like I can't wait to sit and read. I'm not yeah. like I'm not, I don't ever sit and be like, oh, I got to read this athletic development book today. I got to study for for this. It's like give me the give me more books. You know what I mean? Like Connor knows I have a backpack and I told him this before. The most important books I have are the books in my backpack. Those are the ones I want close to me at all times. Mm -hmm. If I'm stuck some, if I'm stuck somewhere at a game and I have my backpack with me, I'm all set because I have all the reading material I could ever want. And I can look sure. it over and be happy as can be for hours, for hours. Um, yeah. And so my, wherever I go, my backpack goes and it's full of like my most special my most special books that I that's have. Awesome. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that's awesome. um, it's great. And I have a book in every car. So my there's a book in my wife's car. There's a book in my car. There's a book <laughs> in every bathroom. We have three bathrooms in the house. So there's a, some type of like phys ed or athletic development book in every yeah. bathroom. Yep. And it's like, dude, it's like, you know, Connor's been in my office. It's like a bomb went off. It's not really an office. It's just a storage facility for my books. But um <laughs> I got books from like, you know, 19 learning, learning Swiss gymnastics from 1934. You know what I mean? Like I've seen that. One. Yeah. So it's just like some of the stuff I don't even understand because the, the way they talked back then was sort yeah. of like, I don't get, but you know, there's diagrams and pictures and I'm good at that stuff. So, you know, I'll, I'll read, I'll read those things. Um, I, for a while I was like really stuck on just finding the most obscure physical education, athletic development, gymnastics books I could find. Um, there was a great program for a while. It was called, uh, uh, what's it called? It was called the, um, Google did it. It was basically like, Google basically went out and went to all these like old libraries across the country, like Harvard library and like all these libraries and found all these old books. And instead of like throwing them away and having them be lost to the world, they basically photocopied them onto, you know, you could get them online freely. Like you can go to Kindle or whatever and look them up. And the mimeograph. Yeah, mimeo, yeah. And so you could find all these books. And so I have a whole bunch of them where I like just started reading through these phys ed books from like 1850. Wow. You know what I mean? But it was awesome. Like I remember reading one book about the Civil War where like some of the generals were pissed because like some of the soldiers from the North who were like weren't farmers and, and, uh, you know, they didn't work there. They, they didn't work outside too much. They, they, they spent too much time indoors studying, right? Mm -hmm. They weren't as fit as some of the other soldiers. Like that's how far back that type of stuff has, wow. go has gone. You know what I mean? There was that, they thought those things, the same things we're thinking today, like kids sit too much 
they were thinking that stuff back then when really they were probably way more active than we ever would be. Yeah. But, um, you know, so, so I love, I love going back and reading those things because it sort of, sort of like gives me inspiration to keep doing what I'm doing. I remember, I remember you and I going back and forth. You were like, yeah, I was reading about like World War II. Like Germany was pissed. Like from then on, like to this day, they have a very good, you know, because program and you're not, you're going to be prepared. Yo, the, 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 uh, 1944 army, army, uh, Oh, I wish I had it with me. It's at work, but uh, it was like it's the 1944 Army um, physical training manual. It's unbelievable. I mean, it's unbelievable. There's there is uh, like sort of like um, you make your own weightlifting bar with like some sand and, and concrete, and they in our little in, in there there's you learn how to do a split snatch, mm-hmm. a push jerk, you know, you squat, right? You learn all these drills where you uh, with your gun. So you hold your gun overhead and do like an overhead squat. You do a lunge, you do a lateral lunge. Like you do bend over and do a deadlift with your, like all these different drills with your gun. There's hand-to-hand combat where you like learn to fight your buddy, right? There's uh, a conditioning section where you do like 300 yard shuttles and uh, how many squat thrusts you can do in a minute. And and right, so there's that. And then there's like an obstacle course. I mean, literally anything you can like think of as far as like would be in a manual like now, it's in that book already. You know what I mean? So and you wonder the developmental stuff going to be able to do that well. I don't think that the people people to, of today's age have the the developmental no. sequence well, to think, go through that, right? that that same stuff. All those killed. All those babies slept on their belly, right? Like I say, all those babies slept on their belly, and they all probably crawled a ton, and they probably you know got to move around a ton when they were little, and did all the things that went all through all those milestones. Um, Not their parents and. and Yep, they had real PE probably every day, and they played before school and after school, and had recess a couple times a day, and and so yeah, they probably had access to a lot of movement that uh, kids these days don't. So, um, yeah, it's 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 pretty cool. So I love I love I love going back and reading that stuff all the time. What? Um, um, yeah, that 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 was awesome. Um, uh, now I forgot my question. God dang it. <laughs> um, uh, so, so with going back to um, the, the grade school kids and stuff, yep. um, is that something where you don't necessarily have a program right now? You just kind of wing it. Um, it. And then, you know, kind of, kind of goes, you, you know, I call it reading the room, just kind of go as, you know, the room goes. Is that how you yep. do a really structured program? And then, yeah, uh, with the with the younger kids. Yeah, yeah. And then as as um, no, go ahead, go ahead. No, it's just, that's that pretty much. You know, I I, I just kind of have an idea in my head of what I want to do and what I want to do next. I'm just, I just always really I'm I'm just with those kids, the youngest kids. I'm trying to stay one step ahead, so I know what I'm going to do next. So yeah. they're so so they're ready. Um, but as, you know, yeah, as the kids get a little bit older, I I sort of structure things up a little bit more. So you, you said that um, during the junior high period you keep the weights fairly light. Yep. Uh, you know, what, just, what does that what does that mean to you? You know, I, I sort of I you know it's funny at that age you can put two and a half pounds on the bar and mm-hmm. they look like they look perfect. And then you mm-hmm. add two and a half more on each side and it all falls apart. Mm-hmm. That's I guess that's what I mean by that age. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah. I have a ton of light bars, like, like training bars. And I, and I love to the kids to use those, to use those things as well. Um, but, but really I've had kids sticking, sticking to the same kind of, kind of weight or around the same weight for a couple of years. Um, yeah. Because the other thing too, is those kids aren't always, aren't always with me year round. Right. So yeah. I might see him for three months and then I won't see him again for another six. So we're sort of picking up where we left off. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then even though they're a little older, they still haven't like hit that, you know, I don't, I don't really see kids start putting that weight on weight on the bar. Like when you start seeing them be like, Oh, that was light when they, until they start growing a little bit, you know, they really start hitting yeah. that growth spurt. 
So, yeah. um, Rufus, yeah, that I makes me think of that that story that you always you always I I, I try to get out of you all the time. Cliff, you uh, it's either Romania where you you were you ran into um, like a Lebanese Lebanese champ, world champion or um, oh oh no that was that was uh, Vardani. Lex, Lex, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, the Russian. Yeah. Um, you, you know, I don't know how much follow away. You, you, know, you know who Yuri Vardanian is? Yes. Okay, well, I was doing a weightlifting camp in Colorado Springs one time, and this guy shows up with his son. And Dragomir Chiroslan was the coach then. He's from Romania. Dragomir. Was a, was a Romanian uh, uh, world champion. Was. And... Uh, Dragomir comes over to me and says, uh, this is Yuri Vardanian. Do you mind if, you know, and he would like to help in any way he can. And so, you know, <laughs> I, I knew who Vardanian was, right? I said, hey, just have him teach the whole camp. It's all right with me. You know, <laughs> do whatever he wants to do. So he had his son there. And I get talking to his son. And I said, and his son was like 15, I think, or 14. I can't remember. And. I said, uh, and you know, he's, you know, snatching probably 85 and clean jerking 135, whatever it was for his age group. He was up there pretty high. And I said, what's your training look like at home? He goes, we just now started going over more than uh, 40 kilos on the bar. I said, you got to be kidding me. He said, for two years, he said, I did nothing but the bar, 20 kilo Thank bar. You. And for two years, he did this. And, you know, Norik winds up making the, the uh, uh, Armenian weightlifting team, you know, Olympic weightlifting team and stuff and in the Olympics and stuff. And I, and I talked to his dad about it later. He, he goes, oh, yeah, he says, the, the, and Dragomir used to tell me this all the time. He said, the first two years, you don't worry about strength. Don't worry about it. Just teach, just teach them the techniques of everything that you're going to do. And he said, yeah. he said, the weight, the weight will come when well, Poland, I guess it's a national law that you can't compete in a weightlifting competition. I think until, until you're 15. And if you're younger than that, you can't, um, uh, use any weights heavier than in a snatch 50% of your body weight and hundred percent in a clean and jerk. And that's, that's all it, you know, that's all it. it. Yeah. And so to get around the meat part, they made it a technique meet where you could do, you know, whatever weight you want to do, but it's still, it didn't count because you had to hit these 10 tech technical points to, to get, to get your points. And that's how they got around. That's how they got around the weightlifting thing. And I adopted that and tried it with some, with some, some of my weightlifters. And I had a kid actually win, uh, um, or got third national championships and he was six, 15 or 16 and he'd never gone over 50% in the snatch in the weight room. I said, Kevin, it's okay. You can go over 50%. And he goes, no, I'm good coach. I'm good. <laughs> Kevin, you're killing me here. <laughs> so funny. And, and great. Uh, yeah. I, I, I got a kid. He's uh, you know, when he was 12, he would never like hand clean over which was still pretty good. He, he hand cleaned like 95 pounds. You know what I mean? Yeah. That was kind of like his, he kind of, he felt like that was enough. And, you know, we would just yeah. do that. And now he's, now he's 14 and he hand cleans 225. Yeah. So, yeah, you so, know what I mean? It's like, yeah. it's, he's going to, it's going to happen. He's going to grow and he's going to get stronger and he's going to start pulling that weight. Well, and they, you know, and, and, and Dragomir and Yuri used to tell me, he said, they get stronger. Yeah. I don't, I don't know how. But they get stronger, you know, right. and based on, you know, their totals and stuff. And they, they all got stronger doing that program. Kevin did it for like three years. I couldn't get him off of it. Like it. Just practicing, you know. Kevin, put more than 35 kilos on the bar, please. I'm good, coach. Okay. You know, I was and, talking to John O'Neill the other day. He was, he was citing uh, Franz Bosch talking about, I forget exactly what it was, but just – grooving sub sub maximal weight and how much how important it is as a as a uh, adolescent um and, and young you know young child to help with that neuromuscular coordination and it only makes sense it does it really does i mean that's why i just think too like 
getting just getting young the young kids to jump a lot like lots of jumping just lots of being able to like put their whole body into something over and over and over again whether it's off of one foot two feet you know jump in various directions or whatever but i i just think that's like one of those exercises that because you know everything's about so many things are about like moving your body and exploding with your hips in sports so jumping is like that's you're basically training your body to be kind of one unit and explode off the ground and 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 the best time and the best i think the easiest way to do it is lots of jumping lots and lots and lots of jumping so you know, we do that, tons of it that, that's funny you say that we, we had a conversation with eric huddleston the other night Corey and i did and uh um he he was at ifast for a long time and then he then he's, he's now with the indiana pacers in the nba and you know he says they talk about these these pro guys being untrained and he goes, they're not, he said, they're untrained as far as weight room activities, but he says, it's not like they're not untrained because they've played basketball where they've had to cut yep. plant and cut load and unload and do all these things all their life. You know, he said, that's training too. And I got thinking about it after, you know, after a couple of days, I'm not that smart on the uptake. And you know, I said, he's exactly right. So all that stuff that you're doing, you know, with even, even the kindergarten kids where they're jumping on stuff, you know, and diving over stuff, you know, it's all, it's all propelling and decelerating and landing and, and doing all that stuff. And then by the time you get ready to, you know, actually train them, I think it's more of just, I, I, I you know, I'm an old football coach, everything, you, you know, you time up stuff. Right. And right. so to me, to me, it's just timing, timing it up a little bit, you know, and, and making a little correction here and there, because they already know how to do it. Sure. You know, if, if, if they've given the, if they've had the experiences that you give them with, with, with those young, with the younger kids, just, just running around, you know, it looks like chaos. Right. Yeah. And, and so, you know, people, you know, parents come in and say, that's not what I brought my kid in for you know, and stuff, and, you know, he's supposed to get stronger. Well, he is getting stronger. You know, they, they just, they, they don't realize it, especially in the, in the deceleration. I think like yeah, what Jimmy was saying like in the NFL, but go ahead, Jimmy. No, I was, I was just agreeing. I think, I think, uh, you know, there's so many little things that you don't see um, that happen when you're in that, in that chaos. You know what I mean? Like when you do play tag, you see kids decelerating and it's amazing. You see, um, talk about shit angles and stuff. They are in them. They put them in the right, they're, they oh, yeah. miraculously get into the, those, the right shit angles um, just naturally. Um, so, so I think, yeah, it's tough to, if you're not with a trained eye, you know, it, it just looks like play. Um, but you know, to, to a, a coach with a good, with, what he, if he knows what he's looking for, you can see all the, all the magic that's happening. You know what yeah, I mean? That's right. Yeah, that's exactly sure. right. Go ahead, Connor. What I was just saying was, you know, Jeremy uh, spoke on, you know, having a vision of becoming an NFL strength coach, you know, he's a good, good football player. And, uh, you know, you see, you, you almost fantasize about what the program would look like. What would you have in the gym? What would you do? And I think at that level, it's probably, again, I'm not experienced at that level, but um, in football for sure. But it's like almost a good strength coach nowadays needs to be able to audit the process of what's the needs analysis at any moment, right? With these different generations coming through and, uh, you know, getting to those, these levels of, you know, collegiate ath athletics and um, professional sports. Um, it's not, it's not always sexy, but it, it can be fun if, if you're, you know, using technology to help us, you know, find out what, where are the leakages and where, what's, what are the things that we need to do to build up the characteristics to support what they already do. Sure. Um, sure. I always loved, uh, Mel, you remember Mel Siff? Yeah, um, he, of course. he, he, he wrote, he wrote a great thing once about, I, I actually keep it on my phone cause I always read it. And he was talking about like how beneficial it would be for, NFL guys to do a little bit less weights and do more gymnastics and martial arts um, because there's so many things and and especially with gymnastics because there's so much deceleration in gymnastics yep. and then with martial arts there's so much acceleration you know with kicks and things like that and then obviously the whole part of grappling you know learning how to use your body and and, and understand leverage and and you know follow pressure with pressure and things like that and he always said like he has this one post about it, how, how he thinks that uh, gymnastics and uh, 
and, and martial arts would be hugely beneficial for athletes at that level. Miraculously enough, now that I'm a football coach with my young sixth, seventh, and eighth grade kids, we do plenty of that stuff, you know? So, and that stuff's actually getting a little bit more um, through like USA football. You're starting to see coaches start to use like hand fighting and grappling and pummeling and things like that to start to get kids used to contact um, before they, you know, before you start tackling someone, it's nice to get kids used to, because some kids hardly ever, if you don't have, like, say you don't have a brother or something or a younger brother or older brother, you might not even wrestle that much or, uh, you know, you might not have been used to playing or any contact, but you really want to play football. So you join your local football organization and the first day someone, someone runs you over because you've never been hit before. You know, that's not fun. So, so we use this type of like kind of pre-contact type work where we get kids, you know, pushing, pulling each other and on the ground, pushing each other's shoulders. And one guy holds the other guy down and he tries to get up. So we get used to sort of being body on body and how it feels. And then we can slowly transition into like more, you know, tackling and hitting and blocking and things like that. So and I'll tell you, you that it's been a lot, it's been a lot of fun. You wonder, you, know you wonder if the, uh, the, the culture would never have it, but you wonder, and I'm speaking out of turn because this is not my sport, but if you could not let kids play football until they played rugby for years, if yeah, that would be a different game, a lot, it would be, a would lot. be less concussions. There would be more tech. They would be much, I would say, I would tell you this, they would be more technical when it, if it came to, if it came to, when it comes to tackling for sure, because there's, it's, they're, they're very good tacklers when it comes to, you know, that sport. And then if you, you, you could combine that with a little bit of wrestling and learning how to fight pressure with pressure and, and leverage, you know, the, the in the trenches part of football would be much oh, yeah. more technical as well. You know what I mean? Uh, so we, we, so, you know, I'm in a situation where I don't get a lot of wrestlers. And so, and, you know, I don't, I don't need to, it's just fine. And, but I want them to, to wrestle a little bit. So we, we do sock wrestling, you know, where you got to take off the other guy's sock, yep. put them on the knees so they can't get hurt, you know, and, and, and let them have at it. And Love so we'll, we'll, go, we'll go around the whole room, you know, and just, and, and just, uh, I, I'll, so, yeah, sometimes I'll go, uh, okay, you got 45 seconds to get both socks off. Let's see who wins. Right. It's great. And we, we actually had a couple of, couple of times this last time we did it, we had a, a couple of kids that went for almost four minutes. They couldn't get their socks off. And you talk about Crazy. tired. Oh, oh they, yeah. They, they just looked at me and said, I can't believe I'm this tired. <laughs> Everybody's going to be laughing at that point. Oh, it's yeah. It's wild. It's wild, but it's great. That's great work. I mean, that's, that's, yeah. that's some great stuff. You know, I love, I love any of that, that type of work for kids, especially for kids, because it's that, you know what, too, it comes to, it comes to them very naturally. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, that's another thing. I remember I, I always tell this story. I was coaching a group of kids one day and then behind me, the next group was getting ready. We had this like kind of little, like this little kind of tiny room where the kids would wait. And so there was like, uh, you know, I was finishing one group and I told these kids behind me, I'm like, just stand here and wait a minute. I'll be done with this group and then we'll get started. And, you know, it was a little turf area and I turn around for five minutes and then I look back and there was six kids there and like, and within 20 seconds, it was three on three wrestling, you know, right away. They just, I always say, like, I say this all the time. If you give kids open space and, yeah. and some time with no equipment, they'll either do one or two things. They'll start playing tag or they'll start wrestling. Always. It's like the, the oldest two sports in the whole world. They'll either start chasing each other or they'll start, you know, jumping on each other and be on the ground wrestling. Always. Yeah, every time. Every time. So yeah, it's it's uh, you can figure you, after a while you yeah you figure this stuff out right. Yeah, that's that's so, uh, that's pretty amazing. Get getting back to throwing balls and stuff. Do you think it's important that they learn to throw with either hand? Uh you know what? That's a great. I usually don't. I usually just let them throw with their dominant arm, but I don't see any problem with it. You know what I mean? Because you know, it's probably, it's probably a good, it's probably a good thing to learn, to learn to throw both, to throw both ways. Um, I, I usually don't do it, but you know, you do with kids start ball, baseball, yeah. kids, kids, we do it with med balls for sure. And yeah, kids yeah, start med baseball. Balls, yeah. Go, go kids ahead. Start, yeah. uh, kids start baseball so early now. It's like they're, 
you know, so dominant already on that side. It's like, just, we just try to, you know, we just do all I try to do when it comes to throwing is, is put them in situations and games where, um, they're not just throwing at a target standing there. I want to see them being able to throw at something moving, which is yeah. really one of my biggest things when it comes to throwing. Um, so <clears throat> obviously dodgeball is an easy one, but we got other games where we kind of play pickle a little bit or, um, you know, variations of that type of game. Or uh, we have a game where like you try to, basically the kid's got to run to first and you're trying to pick them off. And then you could, he get, if you don't get them the first throw, you got to run up to another area and, try to get him a second time. And so like, I love that idea of like being able to like hit a moving target. The other thing, like, yeah. you know, it's like so simple and I probably don't do enough. is like one-on-one, -on -one, like kind of like football. Like you just, one kid yeah. covers another one. He goes out and runs around and tries to get open and you throw the ball to him. You know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, like you, you do that, you got one kid throwing, he's working on his throwing. You got one kid on offense trying to get open, trying to find space. And you got one kid on defense trying to close space and you got, so, and then you rotate them. You know what I mean? So you're working like all, all these, all these skills out of nowhere. You know what I mean? So that, that's why like, I like, touch, that's why I like touch football for the younger ages. Yeah. And because, you know, around, they, because they can play any position, right? Right. Right. They can run around. And what's the other game where you throw the Frisbee, the ultimate. Ultimate. Yeah. 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 There's another. Another. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, it's just great. Um, yeah, so we have so many variations, some that we can play that we do that fit like my facility space that we can do in there. And then we have a whole boatload of games that like when the when the weather gets warm, we'll go outside in the field. We go down, the, there's a field probably, you know, half mile down the road from us. And some days I'll just tell the parents, I'm like, hey, drop the kids off at the field instead of the gym. You know what I mean? Yeah. And we'll go yeah. and we'll yeah. do, we'll do, uh, we'll do some training down there and so we that's when we get have a lot of fun with the with the field stuff and like like i said before like the conditioning aspect you can't beat because the kids don't even know they're mm -hmm. conditioning yeah i, I used you know? to we, we used to take them to the park and uh um uh you know where they had a woods and stuff yep and the uh and so they, they had all seen video clips of the polish weight, weightlifting techniques video right and so you know we I'd say, okay, just start running, stop whenever you want to, you know, lift, lift things, you know, whatever. And you see four or five of them where they're doing log presses, you know, like this. And these, and these parents would look at me and they go, what are you doing? That's what we're training. These, these kids are weightlifters and they're, and we're training. They, they found they, we, there's a big uh, Creek that runs through this one park we used to go to. And they were underneath the bridge of the main street in Indianapolis. And they found these big rocks and they just, you know, they looked at me and I said, go ahead. And they picked them up, started throwing them. What's that? Med ball throws. Right. <laughs> all yeah. With rocks. Let's see how big a splash you can make, you know, and boy, they boom, you know, whoever makes the biggest splash. And uh, yeah. my... Sorry, what were you going to say? No, no, I, I was just going to say that that's, that's one of the best things I ever did with, with those kids was on oh, Sunday. Yeah, we, yeah. we would go over there and, uh, um, or the, the, when that's been 20, 30 years ago now, but we would rock climbing first started indoor rock climbing. Great stuff. I, I rented out the place one night, you know, and said, you know, how much is going to cost me? The guy told me, gave me a real good price on it. You know, and one, one very expensive and ran out the shoes and had through a pizza party and the kids climbed. And I had a Love kid that. that was, I had a kid that was 12 years old. And weighed 255 pounds. And, you know, nobody knew how to belay him, right? Except my oldest daughter. So I said, <laughs> belay him and make sure he doesn't come down, you know. And he was afraid to go up more than three or four climbs, right? Well, at the, at the, by the end of the night, when we were, you know, it's like midnight and he didn't want to come off the wall. He's climbing up right, and down. It. Yeah. Oh my gosh. He thought this was the greatest thing ever. <laughs> you know, look at me, bro. Awesome. He's clear across the gym, you know. He's, look at me. He's all the way up the top. That's great, PJ. Just don't fall on anybody. I love and, it. Uh, um, but, yeah, and so, you know, just all those kind of things that, that you know, it's, it's, like, it's like giving them experiences because they all lived in neighborhoods and didn't have a woods. And so yep. they would, you know, and they're amazed. 
you know, well, how'd you learn all this stuff? Well, it's stuff we did when I was a kid, you know, because we were throwing yeah. rocks in the thing, you know, we we're running through the trails in the woods, you know, and stuff. And, and, uh, and they'd spend two hours out there just running around having a blast, but take a break when you want to. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, you know, sometimes when I post uh, stuff on Twitter, it's some of the, it's not often, but every now and then I get like, I can't believe you do this stuff with kids. Like that's just stuff we did as when I was a kid and I'm really? like, they're kind of, they're kind of being negative. You that's know what I mean? I'm like, well, well, that's the point, buddy. Like they're not getting those things anymore. So we're, we're, we're doing it for them where we're trying to expose them to these type of things because they're just not getting it. And yeah. you know, it'd be great if it would be great. It would be great if I had a time machine, we could all go back, but we can't. And yeah. so it's a different time. And so this is what we're doing. This is what they're going to talk about in a when they're older that I, they came to Jeremy Frisch's gym and did all kinds of crazy jumps into a crash mat and, and uh, you know, yeah. all these silly yeah. games, you know, so it's fine. Yeah, exactly. You know, they don't go yeah. out, they don't, they don't play tag anymore. And uh, no, they don't, they don't, they don't know how to get away from each other. Right. You know? Right. That's one, yeah. that's one of the big, big problems I have is kids don't know. They'll make one move and try to outrun somebody. Well, guess what? In a 20 by 20 foot area, you can't, Usain Bolt can't get away from me and I can't move. You know, that's exactly what they do. They all laugh, you know, of course, it's because he can't use the speed to get away from me. You know, it's crazy. And yep. So, oh, it's awesome. You're smarter, you're smarter than him. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's smarter than me. He knows that the only thing he can do is run a straight line and he's really, really good at it. <laughs> he's very good. At it. That's true. So, uh, I love it. You got some, got some more questions, Connor? No, I mean the biggest thing, and you know, the impetus of all this was Jeremy's one of my mentors. You're my one of my mentors, and and it's always been something I wanted to stimulate conversation. Just so it happens that it's kind of public right now, but it's uh, something that excites me to, to to talk shop with you guys. And um, you know, to this day, I, I I get kids coming in to see me, ten years old, twelve years old. They got avulsion fractures in their elbow and little league shoulder, little league elbow. And I, I just watch them walk. And I'm just like, man, you know, I think we do a really good job at Cressy's with athletic development and, and as a whole. But for the setup wise, when you get that, those young 10 year olds, I, I just, I wish, I wish Jeremy was like in, I'm in my area directly and just say, Hey, yeah. this is where they, I don't want, I don't want them to be in my office. I want them to be there prior. So that they're seeing me when they're, a little older and, and deal with some stuff later if they have yeah. to yeah no i i totally agree i'm not I'm, I'm, to I'm not moving to massachusetts but you guys need to come to indianapolis we, no, we, we should make a trip i'd love to Jeremy, visit jeremy's not doing that till his kids are gone but that's that'd be yeah. great so as soon I, as your kids, I, I was well, in indy for one night uh last year i actually oh your kid one night i was there for us i was at usa football office with andy uh andy ryland and, yeah, it's, uh, like, it's like a half hour north of me. Yeah, I flew in and I literally flew in and they picked my brain for about 12 hours straight. I was like <laughs> brain, brain fried when I got done. They like they just picked me dry as far as athletic development. And then I jumped on a plane and flew home. Oh, man. Oh, shit. I'd yeah. love to I'd yep. love to fly on the wall on that deal. Hopefully, what? hopefully I'll get back out there sometime soon. Oh, God. Make sure you call me. What What are they? Um, I don't, I don't, I don't know much about USA football, but it seems like they're doing a pretty good job of introducing it and talking about, you know, development and things like that. What are, what are they doing? You know what? They're really, uh, um, focusing on getting, um, you know, getting those things like the tackling skills. And so they have a shoulder tackling, um, that they introduced they have a um they also have a blocking program that they introduced which is called like tip of the spear which is like a technique that you use for blocking and then you know their biggest thing they just came out with like a coaching certification that's sort of based on athletic development so you know that's really cool. they're they're starting they're starting at the grassroots level um mm -hmm. as far as like trying to get the information to the coaches because a lot of those youth coaches are mom and pop coaches, you know what I mean? Right. So, yeah. so they're trying to get that information to them so they can sort of implement it, their, their practice, you know, their practices and things instead of just going off of what they learned when they played, you know what I mean? That's pretty much right. 
most of it. So they've, they have a great, you know, their, their, their shoulder tackling system and their advanced tackling system is, is top notch. And, um, you know, I've, I've only seen bits and pieces of their blocking. Um, but it, you know, to me, that's, those are the foundations of football. You know, if you get kids who can tackle block, you can do a lot of good things. Um, you know, it's less, it's less, it's a lot less like, um, tactical, you know, well, we run the spread or you run the wing T and I run the single wing, you know, it's not that stuff. It's more foundational type training, which is, That's which awesome. is, I, love. I think it's great. Have, has it been, I can't remember how long it's been, been around, but, but has it been around long enough to where they've seen, uh, some, some of the fruits of their labor gotten better? No, I think, I think or, there's a lot been around long enough yet. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think, I think, you know, they reach me and, and then, and I think they still need, they're, they're, I think what they need, and we've talked about this, is they need basically a core group of coaches to take the information that they have and go out to the world and spread it. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Like, like if I was in Massachusetts, I'd be like the, you know, tackling guy from USA football. And if you want to learn that, you know, we'll bring it to your school kind of like almost like BFS, you know, bigger, faster, stronger that they sure. need to, they sort of kind of need, you know, need that sort of like, you got a Ambassador. home base and then we're going to teach a whole bunch of coaches how to do it and spread it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Not that we should be doing 700 pound box squats with a cushion like BFS used to do and all that. Yeah. Crazy stuff. <laughs> I nominate <laughs> Jeremy Frisch to take over this program. Right. Give him some yeah. funding. Whoever's listening, yeah. give him some funding. But yeah, Andy Ryland, uh, he's a head. He does the, a lot of the football development. He's doing a, I, I can't tell you, have such a fantastic job over there, especially integrating like the technique of football and the skills of football and then combining it with the, the physicality that you need and the physical skills and the development, you know. So yeah, they're on their way. Let's put it that way. How, how did they receive your obviously pretty well, but how oh, God, yeah. how they receive how did they receive what you're doing and how are they implement what you told them? You know what's awesome? So basically, this is great. They, they, I love people that can do this for me because I can never do it. But they took a lot of the stuff that I said and put mm-hmm. it into this readable, <laughs> really, really sounding thing. You know what I mean? So I was reading. I helped them do a couple of videos, and uh, I'm reading off a teleprompter, and I'm like, wow. I said that, but they made it sound really awesome. Yeah. You know what I mean? So um, that was pretty cool to, to see. Um, so, yeah, they, they, they're all about it. And I think they're, they're, they understand that, um, you know, development needs to come from not only just playing football, come, can come from other sports. Yeah. And then, you know, the more active kids can be and the more diverse. And, and uh, that's great. You know, that's where you, are, that's where you're are, develop. are they but, implementing any of your stuff in the actual practices? They don't really have their own um, sort of practice set up, so to speak. They just basically give guidelines like, oh, you, you know, these pre-contact stuff you could try, you know, uh, gymnastic stuff or, you know, yeah. biometric stuff, whatever, speed threat. You know, any, they don't have like set practice schedules, but they definitely are pushing those things. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. So. Uh-huh. How I think it's scale it though. That would be a great thing. You're right. If it's to try to make it like a curriculum and, and, and have yeah. coaches out there, like you said, Jeremy, ambassadors who can distribute it. That's how it's truly going to be. It's, it's got to be repeated at some point, as random as it should be, sure. and as kind of abstract as it can be. It's just like, it's, you know, these are concepts of, um, of, of coordinating the brain to work together and, and, sure. and structure. But at the same time, you do need some kind of structure. Yeah, uh, I, you know, I, I understand that, but I also look at it as most of the practices are an hour and a half or two hours, and I, I can I can do a lot of things that that Jeremy's talked about tonight within that within that practice. Okay, and so you know, I can I can practice movement skills. I can practice squatting. You know, I, I you know we we can go out and and get more reps playing tag. Which is basically what football is, except you got to grab right. someone and bring them to the ground, right? And so it, this is the way I look at it. And I don't know if this is right. You guys can disagree with me if you want. And and 
but I think there should be some time, not all the time, obviously, but some time where during it, you know, maybe the first part of practice, like we talked about in a warm up, you know, where you're playing these yeah. games, doing these four rolls, <coughs> excuse me, and, and the different things. And so that's, that's kind of what I was getting at. And I would love to see them say, okay, or, you know, Jeremy say, okay, here's some things you can do at the beginning of practice or halfway through the practice or whatever it is, because we're going to be out here a long time, especially when it gets sure. cold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and nobody wants to be out there then. But if I had these things that we can work on to make us better, then, you know, why, why don't we do that? Yeah, you because know, no, some of those kids are, you know, I don't, I don't know when USA football starts, but I know down here where I am, it's like second or third grade they're starting. How do you hold yeah. a second grader's attention for three hours or two hours? Sure. Yep. By game. So, yeah. Yep. And, and so, so I, I was, I was just curious if, if, you know, that, um, cause I, I like, from what I've read and what I've seen, I like, I kind of like their philosophy and stuff. Now knowing that they brought you in, I like them even better. <laughs> and, uh, uh, Great. <laughs> yeah, but, well, I mean, it just, it just shows me that, that they're, they're, they're trying to make an improvement. Sure. And they're, yeah, and they're looking at different ways to do it. And so, um, uh, you know, they're, they're, like I said, they're half hour, hour North of me here. And, you know, I, I, I thought about calling them. I think I did call them one time, didn't hear anything from them or something. And I can't remember what it was, but, um, uh, just, just somebody else won't call me back, Connor. Force no, like you know. <laughs> you're, you're like the, the you're like the the out in the open gem that no one knows about. Yeah, and uh, but no, I you know I just you know if there's some way that that and, and you know that's not special coaching necessarily, right? Yeah, you know, yeah, go out and play sure. tag here. Just line them up and play tag, like you were saying. Go out and guard each other. Yeah, you know, learn to track yeah, a frisbee. Them. Because who knows where the first thing is going when you throw it, you know? And so there's there's a lot of things in there that, you know, I was, uh, that, uh, um, you know, I think they could be implemented. And with you on board with it, he's probably the best guy in the country with this kind of stuff. Um, you know, I, th I think it'd be really cool if they, they implemented it. You know, I would love to, I'd love to see all that kind of stuff. I nominate Jeremy Fresh. <laughs> oh, thank you. Well, I appreciate that. It's been, it's been a go. good talk. I'm going to Rufus, I'm a, when, Rufus, when did you play at IU? What years? In the 80s? Oh, no, it's 80s. <laughs> 71 to 76. Nice. So, yeah, I'm, I'm an old guy. Just so. missed Jeremy. You guys probably would have played each other. Right? Yeah, yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah, they'd probably Rufus beat us. We were so bad. So, so uh, but, uh, so. Well, Jeremy, well, thanks a lot for doing on. this. Yeah, yeah this, appreciate this was This was great fun. you guys having me on. Appreciate Connor filling in for my special assignment, Corey, uh, that we got him on. And uh, so, but uh, uh, thanks a lot. Jeremy, tell people where they can get a hold of you or watch your videos and learn yeah. more about it. Um, you can find me on uh, all your favorite social media platforms uh, on, uh, I'm on Twitter. I think it's just under my name. I think it's just Jeremy Frisch. And then, uh, and then on, um, I think my, uh, Instagram uh, what's achieve underscore a, performance. yeah achieve performance underscore performance I'm on there and then uh, uh and then Facebook oh and then you know achieve performance.net's my website so I don't know if people use websites anymore I know it's that's old stuff but uh you know Twitter's <laughs> my most up-to-date you know stuff's happening all the time on there it's, god it's, dang uh, you're gonna make, you're gonna force me to get on that stupid Twitter right it's you know it's great there's a lot of a lot of good coaches on there and so yeah, Facebook right. is Facebook as well. You know, I'm on there as well, not as much, but Facebook so. used, to, used to be the bomb. It used to be great. Yeah, uh, content back in the day, Jeremy. Yeah, you know, it was I'd, good. I'd, I'd be I'd be like giggling. That's my buddy Jeremy. He'd poke at someone, but it was all play, it was all in fun, and it was yeah, uh, it was it was good. You don't like to see people truly go after someone. It's more, more like you know trying to beat a bully who's trying to go on after someone else. Yeah, it's good. Those were the days. It's fun. Nah, I don't. I don't even. I don't even engage anymore, you know, so. So, so anybody listening, is that in Clinton, Massachusetts? You got kids? Yes. Send, send them to Clinton. Jeremy. Yeah, what's the, what's the name, of your, name of your gym again is what? I, 
achieve performance training. Okay. All right. So get a hold of them and, uh, and, uh, we'll, and you'll get some good training because there's not a whole lot of good training out there. That's for sure. Thank you so much for having, for having me on. This has been awesome. Not a problem. Thank you very much for coming on. And, and, uh, we're, we're going to have to do this again. So please let's do it. I got questions. I got, I got burning questions. I got my, what would you do right. if you won the lottery question? Save them up. I'm ready to go. You let me know when we're on again. I'm in. Jeremy, I'll come see you soon, buddy. All right. Thanks so much, guys. I'm going to go put the kids, you, Jeremy. kids down. No I'll problem. I'll see you later. See you, man. Right. Bye. Bye. Thanks, Rubus. No problem. Thanks, Connor, for helping. Oh, that was fun. That was He's a lot of fun.